looking at this unit, um, something's gone wrong in the high pressure switch. Um, it's uh, even when it's sat and the system's off, um, it, it will stay tripped. And I've wound it up to 450 psi just to get it to run. don't want to be doing that because if, if it's seriously overcharged it could be accurate but it's not it's um something's gone wrong with the workings in there there's not enough spring pressure pushing down on the bellows yeah see standing pressure is only 170 and that's at 400 so 70 psi diff maybe should cut back in at um, 380 you, you don't want to be poking these to make them run unless you know what pressure's in there because I, I have put my gauges on something once and um, it went right past these ones will go right round again, they're, different. they're class 1 gauges. They went right past the um, top, round past zero. So, uh, especially the three phase things, they'll, they will pump up with some stupid pressures if there's something gone wrong, or somebody's overcharged it, that one. They completely fill the high side of the liquid. But yeah, see, that's how you're running at 240, no, 220. We're just pumping it down now. do is wind this in and dump that across could do with being a bit lower we'll leave it sit Okay, got a new switch on there. Got all the old gas out of it. Um, then we're going to put 449A in there. Got about 8 kilos in there, I think. 8.5, something like that. Okay, we've got that. Pulling a vacuum now. See how good it is. That gets. Um, and then the other unit, the switch, you can turn the switch. So uh, I've got it's one of these G-Wiz switches. Um, so I thought I'd get, get the same again and I ordered it online and the picture looked the same. And they've obviously changed the design of it. I was hoping it was just going to fit on in the same place. But the old one, you can see, I think it's got water in there. And uh, that's what's happened, it's shorted now, it's amazing that it was still working. Plus I said whoever fitted it, fitted it upside down. Which, <laughs> anyway, that's where that's got to go, same as that one. So we'll have to shorten one of these conduits. I suppose the range has just got in the top, because that's just anything that gets in there is going to plus these. Getting the conduit here, look at that. It's not very good. I 
I might bring a load of silicon here. If I pop the cover off of this, I could fill that with silicon. Where do you start? Or where do you stop, rather? Down to 12,000. Right, it's the moment of truth. Sounds a lot more easy. We've got heat in the discharge pipe straight away, so more than likely going the right way. Or it should come down. Sounds like it's pumping down. There we go, happy days. We bunged a load of silicon in there on the top of this and in the in when the wires come down I filled that up as best I could. So hopefully anything that does get in is just going to come out of that gap there because these, these bends are not at all waterproof. I mean they've been better coming down inside and coming out low level. And then they could have come in the bottom of the box. Because uh, these are waterproof they could have just drilled two holes in the bottom. That's all back up and running. I've got to print the label off with the global warming sensor. We have to put the, the kilograms and the equivalent in CO2 on a little label on the things. So I'll print that off. Put a paint mark on it and I'll get on. You press the switch. They're, usually, they're, they're not as waterproof as the originals. Um, I couldn't get one of these. Yeah. Mm -hmm.